Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Welcome to year six of the 17 Verses podcast. I'm your host, Maher Haq. In this podcast, we take a small selection from the Quran every day and recite it to you in plain English, so you can get a small slice of God's word while you go about your day. By averaging 17 verses per day, we're able to break the Quran down into manageable pieces and finish it in one year. If you enjoy the podcast, please help spread the word. Tell your friends and family, subscribe in iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts, and write us a review. Show notes and a text episode can be found at 17verses.com. That's the numbers 17-V-E-R-S-E-S dot com. Today's selection is from Surah 9, at tawbah or Repentance, verses 43 through 59. These verses assert that those who do not participate in jihad or struggle are hypocrites and then lists the excuses of the hypocrites for not bearing arms against the unbelievers in the Tabuk expedition. The latter part of the surah was revealed after the Tabuk expedition in the late summer of the ninth year of the Hijra, around October 630 AD in the modern Gregorian calendar. Tafsir for this selection is a short historical exposition on the the book expedition and that region of northwestern Arabia. Also, please remember that this is the only surah in which we do not begin with the words Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Without further ado, Allah give you grace. But why did you, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, give them leave to stay behind? You yourself should not have given them leave, so that it would have become clear which of them spoke the truth and of which of them invented false excuses. Those who believe in Allah in the last day will never ask you for exemption from fighting with their wealth and their persons. Allah is aware of those who are righteous. Only those people ask for exemption who do not believe in Allah in the last day, and whose hearts are filled with doubt and are wavering because of their doubts. If they had intended to march forth, they would certainly have made some preparation for it. But Allah did not like their going forth. So he made them lag behind and they were told, Stay behind with those who stay behind. Had they gone with you, they would have added nothing but mischief. And they would have made efforts to create disorder among your ranks. And there would have been some among you who would have listened to them. Allah knows the wrongdoers. Indeed, they had plotted sedition before and created disturbance to make you unsuccessful until the truth came through and the decree of Allah prevailed, even though they disliked it. Among them there are some, like Jad bin Qais, who said, Grant me exemption and do not expose me to temptation of the Roman women's beauty. Have they not fallen into temptation of telling lies, double dealings, and hypocrisy already? Surely hell has encircled these disbelievers. If you gain success, it grieves them. But if you face a setback, they say, We had taken our precautionary measures, and turn away rejoicing. O Prophet, peace be upon him, tell them, Nothing will happen to us except what Allah has ordained for us. He is our protector. And in Allah let the believers put their trust. Further tell them, Can you expect for us anything other than two excellent things, victory or martyrdom? But we are waiting for Allah to afflict you with punishment, either from himself or by our hands. So wait if you will, we too are waiting. Say, whether you give willingly or with reluctance, it will not be accepted from you, for you are the persons who are transgressors. The reasons which prevent their contributions from being accepted are that they disbelieve in Allah and his messenger, that they come to offer prayer but reluctantly, and that they offer contributions but unwillingly. Let neither their wealth nor their children dazzle you. In reality, Allah intends to punish them with these things in this life, and that their souls may depart while they are still unbelievers. They swear by Allah that they are indeed believers like you, yet they are not of you. In fact, they are afraid to appear to you in their true colors. If they could find a place of refuge or a cave or any hiding place, they would certainly run to it with an obstinate rush. There are some among them who criticize you, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, concerning the distribution of sadaqat. If they are given from it, they are pleased. And if they are not given from it, lo, they are full of rage. 
It would have been better for them if they had only been pleased with what Allah and His Messenger had given them and said, Allah is all sufficient to us. Soon Allah will give of His bounty, and so will His Messenger. Indeed, to Allah do we turn our hopes. Amin. Now concerning the Tabuk region of northwestern Arabia where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, led an expedition in the ninth year of the Hijra. Quote, Tabuk is a place near the frontier of Arabia, quite close to what was then Byzantine territory in the province of Syria, which included Palestine. It is on the Hijaz railways, about 350 miles northwest of Medina and 150 miles south of Ma'an. In consequence of strong and persistent rumors that the Byzantines, or Romans, were preparing to invade Arabia, and that the Byzantine emperor himself had arrived near the frontier for that purpose, the prophet peace be upon him, collected as large a force as he could and marched to Tabuk. The Byzantine invasion did not come off, but the Prophet took the opportunity of consolidating the Muslim position in that direction, and made treaties of alliance with certain Christian and Jewish tribes near the Gulf of Aqaba. On his return to Medina, he considered the situation. During his absence, the hypocrites had played, as always, a double game, and the policy he thereto followed of free access to the sacred center of Islam to Muslims and pagans alike, was altered, as it had been abused by the enemies of Islam. Unquote. Thank you. This concludes today's episode of the 17 Verses Podcast. I hope that this selection helps increase your understanding of the Holy Quran just a little bit. If you like the podcast, you can subscribe in iTunes or Stitcher and write us a review. Or you can grab the RSS feed and put it into your own podcast app. The show notes, including the text version of this episode, can be found by going to 17verses.com. That's the numbers 17-V-E-R-S-E-S dot com. Thank you, and be well.